I know you came into photography all from mostly from skateboarding and from your um, first profession. No, 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 I mean, uh, so I was a sponsored skateboarder, um, early 20s, kind of realized that the next generation behind me was like way more dynamic as skateboarders. And the idea of being a pro skateboarder was a, was a fleeting idea. So trying to figure out the next move, I had the good fortune of meeting a guy who got me into doing um, some production work for his company. That production work uh, required some photography. So I was able to save up money, buy a camera and kind of start learning photography, like on the job kind of thing. Um, skateboarding just exposed me to photography through magazines like Thrasher, uh, Trans World. Again, print form, you know, you're flipping through pages, you're kind of seeing the dynamicness of like fisheye shots, uh, use of strobes, use of light, just raw energy. Um, so fast forward, working for this guy, you know, doing photography, I realized that photography to me became um, a second love or passion in my life, like much what skateboarding was. It just kind of consumed me. So I just started taking my camera with me when I would go skate with friends, go travel and just starting shooting to uh, shoot more and more. Um, and just realize that this thing uh, of photography was, I don't know, it was very special to me. So just tried to nurture it as much as I could once I realized that. Cool. Um, so I don't know if we can get this screen much larger. Stefan, if maybe you have something that you can share on your screen and then we can kind of keep going through with some questions. Do you have anything or? Yeah, I mean, um, I, don't, I mean, I don't have too much like to share. I mean, I do have what I've been doing um, through this whole time of uh, downtime of quarantine is a lot of printing, obviously. And, you know, I definitely appreciate all the help you guys have been giving me with the ability to do that. Um, you know, a lot of it is just going through my older work and just trying to archive it specifically just to have it in physical form, all types of varieties from, you know, street stuff to portraits to aerial work, which is what I've been really focusing on. So I just made, you know, got a little archival box, you know, label it with what's going to be on it. Um, you know, store it in my, uh, closet at my studio here. But yeah, I've been using the uh, A4 size paper, uh, Juniper Burrito Rag, which is my favorite that you guys make. Um, and it's interesting because I think shooting with like the standard like 35 format digital or film, like the, the paper like is like a perfect ratio for for that. So uh, the last city that I got to do was Minneapolis. Um, I hadn't really printed much of these. So it was kind of cool to finally have that opportunity to uh, to bring them to to life yeah you guys can see that <laughs> uh <laughs> you know so that's, been, that's been pretty cool and it's been like good just to like have these because um you know it's always the worst thing when you want to show someone your photos and you're like fumbling through a digital device like your phone or a laptop or an ipad to try to find the photograph versus like you know just to have these archive boxes um will be really cool to to reference you know some some atlanta work uh black and white stuff you yeah, know, so I'm gonna try it. to turn my share screen on and if maybe we can check out some of your images that I have. Okay. Um, let's just see if I can pull this yeah. out. It's really cool seeing that we got like a lot of people from all over, Cancun, Switzerland, Jersey, Tucson, Chicago, Maryland. So That's can really everyone awesome see these? See. Yeah, if you're in the chat room, don't be shy. You know, this is a, supposed to be an interactive kind of thing. So if you got a question or anything you want to, uh, you know, ask, go ahead. Uh, Michael Soto is asking, uh, I use a variety of paper from Moab, but my favorite is a Juniper Burrito Rag. Um, let's see. And Ben's asking a question. The ink for Juniper Burrito is uh, photo black ink, not matte. All right, so yeah. we're just going to keep kind of going through these questions. I'm not sure how we can get ourselves larger, but let's just <laughs> yeah, kind of no. go through them and yeah, no, we'll, we'll get through as many as we can. But um, yeah, yeah, this is all about you guys and what you want to learn. So yeah. bring on the um, questions and we're going to kind of try to get through as as many um, questions as we can. So yeah. I know you just kind of answered this. Um, so your favorite or one of your favorites is really the Juniper Burrito Rag and you're using the matte ink and 
No, no, I'm, um, using, I'm, using, I'm using the photo black ink for Juniper Burrito Rag, not oh, the, Matt. The photo yeah. black ink. Um, so that was Ben. And now Donald is asking, can you take us through what a typical day is like for you? Uh, a typical day varies. Um, you know, I, I don't really focus too much on what I'm going to be shooting uh, that day. I kind of like just like whatever is intriguing me or following me, go shoot. Try to make use of the day by shooting. Uh, recently, with everything going on, it's been indoors, so it's been a lot of like reorganizing of uh, whether it's negatives, digital files, archiving the files. You know, running prints too uh, for people that are requesting prints. Um, you know, so it, it varies, but I try to be as productive as I can. And then there's also days where I don't try to push myself if I'm not feeling creative, creative or anything like that. I just learn to just relax and enjoy the day, and then try to revisit it tomorrow. Um, well, yeah, so I mean, it, it can vary. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite paper for black and white photos only? Um, I like the Entrada rag. Um, the textured or natural ones are really good. Um, I think if you want, <clears throat> excuse me, want something a little bit more glossier, um, the Slick Rock Metallic Pearl is, is an interesting one too, but I would say the Entrada rag stuff is really good. Cool. And what uh, uh, size paper do you typically print on? Uh, it varies. If it's like street stuff or portraits, the letter eight and a half by 11 is super solid, I think. Aerial work, just to save space, I've been using the A4, but I try to go a little bit bigger to kind of show off the dynamic uh, shots from above. Um, and that's, that's kind of what I stick to. Then personal, like family, shots that i get is usually like a four by six or five by seven just to kind of save those or put them in a photo album myself cool um yeah. i'm gonna sh just share my screen for now but how do you uh soft proof prior to printing um so i have two monitors i i use a benq monitor and work in the adobe uh 1998 space on it just to see the coloring uh, i've learned that that is a more closely accurate color to what you see on that monitor to what you see coming out of the printer. So usually I'll just check it on there. Um, and, you know, getting the custom ICC profiles made for my printer with the paper that I use just really stepped up the level of accuracy and consistency. So definitely working with the Adobe RGB space 1998 on a, a, a BenQ type monitor has helped me with the soft proofing for sure. Cool. Um, someone is asking, do you have any plans to go to Switzerland? I would love to once everything <laughs> kind of settles. There's a lot of places in Europe that I haven't had the chance to visit. You know, Switzerland, I've heard great things about it. I would definitely try to do my best to get out there uh, once everything gets gets figured out with all this. Yeah, I agree. Um, and what kind of printer are you using? Um, Currently using right now Canon ProGraph 1000 and a Canon ProGraph 2000 for uh, larger format prints. And that's when you use, because I know you sometimes um, print on rolls. Yeah, so yeah, any of the rolls, 17 inch rolls, 24 inch rolls, I will run. I The 17 inch sheets are great, but you know sometimes the volume or the ease of just a roll getting cut is, is way more faster and better than having to constantly load you know the big sheets. Cool. Um, what is your workflow for printing as far as uh, running test strips? I, you know, if I'm just doing a general print and I want to see it on a smaller scale, so if someone's like, oh, I'd like a 24 by 36 inch print, if it's an image I've never printed, so I want to see how it comes out, I'll do it on a five by seven or eight and a half by 11, just smaller scale to see how it looks. Um, if I want to like get the fine detail, like what it is, I'll crop out, um, a section of the print and scale it in to kind of see like what it would be at that size. So those are two ways that I would definitely do like a test print before actually running the, the print, the large print itself. Cool. Um, how did you uh, get started selling your photos? Um, this is a two part question. So we'll start with that. Okay. Um, this day and age, it's really, it's really interesting. So, you know, I was doing printing before Instagram and these, great accessible platforms were there. So I was just doing it when people saw a photograph, they would just say, I like it. How can I buy it? That was the original way. Nowadays in the current form, what I've really found intriguing is through say stories on Instagram or sharing 
um, a photo of the prints that I made on Twitter, it really reminds people that all these images that they're looking at on a screen, whether it's their phone, computer, laptop, whatever, that these are photos that could be and should be printed. So I always find it intriguing when I'm just printing something for myself and showing it getting made and coming out, I'll get a message, you know, just about almost every time uh, of someone interested in the photograph and curious about buying it. So that's, um, I guess, more or less the current way of how I get some of my print sales was just simply whether I'm archiving or doing something for myself, people see it as, as a physical form. They're reminded of it and they ask about it. Yeah. And the second part to this question was um, you kind of went through it a little bit already, but what is the best way for maybe someone to just get started who isn't currently selling their, um, their art? Um, I would imagine the best way is like just stuff and start low wise that's the one thing people always ask like how much should i charge i think the charging the value is up to you what the photograph feels to you means to you but the idea is start low because you could always go up you know i, I think we all want to be someone who can make great art that can have a high price point but it takes time to work and get there so start low start giving it away to friends you know if they're going to hang it in their home or they're going to you know be proud of it people will see it ask about it so um it's all about just sharing your work and getting it out there um just have to figure out like i guess what makes more sense to you but yeah just let people know if you have a social channel like just let people know i'm selling prints for ten dollars twenty dollars whatever it may be and just you know start and see, start to see like which part of your work people um you know register with yeah and another yeah. um question about someone kind of starting out um, what advice would you give someone who's just picking up a camera for the first time with no photography background? Oh, I would say have as much fun <laughs> with it as you can. You know, the first, you know, few years, especially of photography, it's a lot of like self-discovery. Um, I would definitely try to say, don't get too caught up in trying to do what other people are doing. If you see that they're getting success from that, uh, um, you know, I, th I think it's way better early on to like really take the time to discover your own voice in photography, discover what intrigues you, like shoot everything that you see around. But when you get home, really take the time to look at the photographs that you're shooting. And you'll probably start to see a common theme of whether it's framing or subject matter and just pay attention to the things that like speak to you that, you know, grab you when you make your pictures. Um, and then again, this is where printing comes in the hand, even if it's like you don't have a printer maybe once a month get five shots or something go to a print lab and just get them printed out so you can see them in physical form because that's going to help you understand your photography a lot more but i would say just have fun you know try to be as a cre creative as you can experiment but also pay attention to like what really speaks to you within the photographs you're making um have you found a paper that that is best that doesn't really show scratches or is scratch resistant or do you, have you had any uh, issues with it? I mean, paper in itself, it's like as strong as like the weight of some of the papers Moab makes, it's it's great, but it's still a fragile, um, you know, fra fragile physical form. I've never seen scratch resistant. Um, I don't know if they really make anything like that. So, um, you know, that's what the whole importance of mounting and like understanding like after you make your print, how you frame it, like what do you want to do? So yeah, I've never seen anything like that just yet. Right. Um, and then aside from just creating some great content, uh, how else do you promote your work? Well, I mean, you promote your work by social channels and that's just not, not digitally, but also physically. Um, I'm a big believer in like, you know, still the greatest um, sharing sources, word of mouth of people. So that's why it's like, if I have friends that I know they want photographs, like I'll, gladly make a print for them and give it to them you know and even sometimes like i believe too that if you want to gift a print to somebody the presentation is from a to z so it's like if i kind of know their taste like i'll get it framed or i'll get it framed in a way that i think does the photo justice and give it to them like that uh because to me that way it's like that's the whole presentation of the image but yeah social channels are a great way and just community you know, start just speaking with people online, you know, sharing work online and engaging in that way. Right. Um, what software do you use for printing? 
Uh, I work with uh, Photoshop and any last minute fine tuning of the images. And then uh, the native software for the Canon printers, Canon Print Studio Pro. Um, I've really been enjoying working with that software since I've got these printers. It's pretty seamless and it's pretty, you know, there's no issues with it at all. Right. Um, and this kind of goes along with, I know you already answered this question um, on which printer you use, but is there anything that you would recommend or maybe a different print, different printer you'd recommend for someone that's just starting out? I would probably say the, I think it's a Canon Pro 100. I think that's like a, a more entry level type of printer. Um, I use Epson for years and I thought they were really good with what they do, but then I had a couple of master printers that I know and talked with and they both, you know, one was on the East Coast, one was on the West Coast and they were both just praising Canon. And so I was pretty intrigued by it and started trying Canon out. And I you know, think their software and hardware is a little bit more better than the Epson stuff. Cool. And I'm just getting um, a few more questions about the printer you use. So if you could just repeat yeah, yeah. the printer you're currently using. Uh, repeat the question again. Um, what printer are you currently using? Okay, I'm using two printers at my studio, ProGraph 1000 and ProGraph 2000. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then what? Uh, where do you get your custom ICC profiles if you are using custom? Uh, there's a lot of places that can do it. I'm using custom ones that I got made uh, through Freestyle Photo out here in LA. They can do the service through the mail. Um, it's pretty great. Uh, you know, the, the logic behind that I was explained is that you could buy five, you know, Canon ProGraph 1000 printers just due to technology. They're not all going to print the exact same way. So the idea is find the paper stock that you find yourself printing with over and over. They give you like a color chart uh test to print out they explain to you how to print it out and you print it you send it to them they scan it in through that paper and you get an exact uh custom icc profile for your sole printer with the paper you're using and like i said earlier the consistency that i've seen through having that has been really amazing um now what is in your camera bag <laughs> uh camera bag varies usually like a little kind of compact point and shoot camera um lately i've been running with this which is um m10 monochrome uh aside from this one i'll use a mp film camera as well so that's usually what you can find in my camera bag if i'm just going out for the day and just kind of walking around um lenses i'll usually have in there is a 28 sumeron which is like super compact um 50 apo sumicron and then if I want like a 90 or something like that. Um, so someone is saying, I think I heard you say shooting 35, um, 35 oh, bit yeah. well. Uh, so how would you approach shooting in relation to how you envision it being printed? Um, the paper size I was talking about was A4. Um, you know, I'll, I'm just gonna show one more print again from the A4. Um, you know, like you don't, you don't obviously you don't have to crop any kind of way, but this, the the ratio of border, how I do it, I think just works out pretty even across the whole thing. Um, now as far as um, shooting in relation, I shoot how I shoot, and then like I think at this point I've been doing enough printing where I kind of understand where where it's gonna lit uh, live on the print. So I do a lot of like you know uh, portrait vertical orientations and shooting for the most part so i just try to like figure out which paper to me it's more about which paper has the texture the finish that i think will best represent the photograph that i made or my style because that's the interesting thing of realizing with printing is that it's an extension of your photographic style so whether you shoot with a certain camera a certain lens now the, the next step is comprehending what size paper best represents you know the framing used the texture, the finish, then once you get that, it's it's another way for people to understand that that's that person's work. If it's printed on that paper and printed at that scale or this type of size, most likely it's gonna be this person's photograph. So I thought that was more or less my approach to how do I imagine the print coming out? It's more or less just like connecting from the beginning to end. Right. 
And I know that you do um, a bunch of different types of photography. You can do mm -hmm. um, some portrait, you do aerial, you do street. And someone is asking about um, how you help subjects feel more comfortable during modeling shoots. Um, okay, so as far as like modeling shoots, like my approach has always been this. Um, it's a group project. You know, so for me, if I shoot with a model and it's someone that I haven't shot with yet, like the first thing I tell them is, bring whatever wardrobe you find inspiring that you feel comfortable in. I think it's not about forcing an idea or something on them, but rather invite them into the creative process and like let them know like, hey, we're both in this together. Um, so that's the first step because anybody, if you don't feel comfortable in whatever it is you're wearing, like you're just not gonna have good photographs. And the second approach for me is I don't like to dictate modeling poses. For the most part, I like to see how people move to me that's what makes all of us unique is the way we tilt our head when we laugh the way we walk across the room the way we sit down so like i'll just kind of be sitting back and say i want to see you walk across the room or if i'm shooting them and i notice they fix their hair a certain way and i see a shot within that i'll ask them to do that again because it's more or less what's natural and who they are within their movement versus like give me a stock pose or a stock position you know unless i guess unless you see something specific that you want but Overall, um, I guess creating a relaxed environment just starts with letting them know, like you know, you're in it together, together to create. Right. Um, how do you package your prints for shipping? Um, I do a few ways. The one way, um, so for smaller print sizes like five by seven, up to eleven by fourteen, you can get um, photo mailers, Sammy's.com. Sammy's camera, they sell a photo mailers, come with a piece of cardboard envelope, the envelope say photos inside do not bend. That's been pretty solid. Um, anything goes beyond 11 by 14. I use shipping tubes. Um, so I use these tubes by a company called um, Yazoo Mills. I think they're out of Pennsylvania. Um, these are like super durable shipping tubes. Anytime I've shipped these, across sorry my dog ship yeah. these across the um even to europe i've never had any issues so these are super strong shipping tubes um and i use those i use some uh kind of like wax butcher paper from canton and lay the print inside roll it up with the paper so it protects it use some low tact artist tape to tape the ends together of the wax butching paper and then stuff the tube on the end so it's not moving around. And that's usually how I, I try to do my shipping for anything over 11 by 14. Cool. And do you find the, the no bend stickers really work on your, uh, your safe? No, <laughs> no. I mean, like I would, I would, I would say between the 11 by 14 mailers that I use, I probably have like a 95% success rate. That's um, great. On four, yeah. It's, it's pretty good, but I mean, you know, using the U S postal service and, for domestic stuff and it's just sometimes they just don't care like you know there's like even though it's a bigger thing it's got this envelope look to it they'll just they'll offend it you know so yeah. unfortunately that's that happens but the shipping tubes have been great good mm -hmm. um and what ppi do you use um around like 300 like 72 is probably minimum but like 300 is is more than enough i think especially if you're working with like you know digital imagery mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you seem to handle print requests on an individual basis um why have you chosen this method over a website shot uh shop with curated selection of prints um that's that's a good question uh two there's two approaches to it one i think that's how it, printing in the digital age is interesting because we have all of this amazing technology at our hands to like create prints um so I always try to gauge like the value of a print that someone buys versus like just having an open-ended edition. Um, two, I, I kind of like the engagement. Like if someone really wants a print, message me, we'll discuss it through DM and then I'll make a print. Uh, I kind of like that you kind of have to take these steps to get a print. It's not just like always there on the site and it's always readily available. I like this idea of a connection of sorts that if you really like this print, like you'll take the the time to like message with me and we'll get, and I'll get it out to you. Um, I will do 
additions of sorts on my uh, on a big cartel that I have from time to time. But for the most part, I I think it, a half of it also is me trying to rack my brain of like, well, what what photos would I put on like a general web store for people to buy? What sizes would I offer? It just becomes a bit overwhelming. So for the most part, I think it's really interesting to share a photograph and it connects with someone so much that they're willing to talk one-on-one -on -one with you to, to order a print. Right. I feel like I've seen um, some of your limited edition prints that you've put up, maybe like one or two um, in the past like few months. Well, I did one in December. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to supply album artwork for um, the last uh, Atmosphere album. And it was just a collection of images that they chose for the album artwork. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, I'm just going to run, you know, like four of the photographs as, you know, an addition on 11 by 14 paper. So that's right. what, um, that was the last time I did that. So for me too, it's like, I think if I do additions or I do something on a site, it's going to be kind of like a series that like connects with one another, not just uh, a bunch of random photographs put together. Cool. Um, and then yeah. where do you purchase your frames? Um, so I was, before everything, I was just going on like a quick basis. I would go to like Aaron brothers. I felt they would do a pretty decent job of like just being able to walk in to one nearby and get a, get a decent frame, decent matting and decent glass. Um, now I've been working with, uh, this woman named Bonnie Taylor who works with a company out in Burbank called film solutions. They have an outsourced, uh, framing company that does amazing work. Um, sometimes if I am doing a, a larger format print than I can do myself, I'll go to Sammy's and they have an in-house, um, framing service that they work with as well. Cool. Um, when you print to archive, do you print just, uh, just an edition of one? Yeah. When I print the archive, it's just one to have, um, you know, unless I'm building out a portfolio then I may run the print in something else. But the idea of having archive is just, you know, as people start to get together again and you're talking about work and going over work, just the impact of having uh, tangible physical work to show is a lot more impressive um, than, again, you know, swiping through an iPad or doing some digital stuff. Um, do you give your models some of the prints that you take of them? I try to do that more recently. Uh, I definitely have been shipping prints when I can to models that I've shot with because, again, I think any models that work these days, I don't think not too many, unless you're shooting Polaroids maybe, not too many are getting prints sent to them of like their work. And I think that's something that they might appreciate having. Yeah. Um, someone's asking if we're gonna share this recording and yes, we will share this um, when we're done. Yep. In about a few days. Um, what is the breakdown of your sales, uh, such as maybe gallery sales, shows, or um, online, personal website, social media? Um, I mean, it's trending the last. It's been a minute. Like the, the past little showings that I've done, they weren't work for sale. So I did show some work at like the Leica boutique at uh, in LA at Sammy's. Um, so most of the work that I've been doing, as far as like gallery ish kind of stuff, is just really just been for display um so recently i think just using the power of connection and social media um i would probably say 95 percent of my sales have been through that and then the other half will be referrals through friends um who seen a photograph and just, they put me in touch with a buyer who's interested in it cool mm -hmm. um what size print do you sell the most of uh i would say it could vary but i would say between 11 by 14 to 13 by 19. So 11 by 14, 11 by 17, 13 by 19 are usually pretty solid. And sometimes I'll get people who they just want a bigger photograph. So, you know, 18 by 24, 17 by 22 and 24 by 36 occasionally. Um, someone's asking about, uh, do you seek to protect your work on social channels with any mark, um, watermark or copyright? Um, I think early on through like Tumblr and some of the stuff I was watermarking and then I just kind of got over it. Um, especially learning about the copyright issues with photography. So technically, you know, anyone holding any camera, once they physically push the shutter, that's your copyright. Like you own that photograph. 
So any issues that I've had with um, my photos being placed or misused without my consent, you know, I just usually got like a general cease and desist letter from a lawyer years ago and just, I'll send that off or try to reach out to them nicely, you know, and just say, Hey, like, I'm not approving of this. Please take it down and go from there. Can you also repeat um, where you get your ICC profiles? Oh uh, yeah. Freestyle photo in Los Angeles. So I think if you Google freestyle photo, Los Angeles, you'll get their website and um, you'll find out the service of the ICC profiles on there. Um, how do you choose which image to print? Um, I think for me, the what I feel like recently has been more or less, if I'm willing to take the time to process the image, um, you know, if I'm going to scan it in, if it's film, if I'm going to scan it in, clean it up, or if it's digital, I'm going to make the select and, you know, process it through camera raw, then it should be printed. That's just kind of how I see it. Um, if, if you feel like it's good enough to post, on your social channels and you should probably try to print that if you feel that strong about it. Can you explain how you handle editions? Um, if you release an edition of 10, do you ever reprint that same photo? Um, and if so, how do you hand, handle numbering it? Uh, so the, with the editions, I try to limit it to size and, and paper stock. I, I'm open to reprinting the photograph, but that's why the engagement of a one-on-one -on -one questioning is is more better because then it's like it's separate from that addition. Um, numbering, you know, I just usually do the number one through ten. If it's not of an addition, I notice it or I'll note it as an AP, which you know, artist print. That way, it's like it, it will be told that it came directly from me. Uh, so that's how I try to control it. And again, like that's the interesting thing about printing in the digital age is, you know, how strong are additions per se when you do them. Uh, unless you're going to go through a service uh, like digital silver imaging in Boston, that they can create uh, digital silver gelatin prints. So it's a little bit more finer of a printing process, but um, you could probably create a, a more um, maybe value around those type of additions. How do you choose the proper paper for the specific characteristics of the photo? Um, it depends. I think if you notice a photograph with tons of texture, landscape, nature stuff, then I feel like the Entrada rag stuff is going to do, do it justice pretty much. If it's like a contrasted black and white image, um, you know, I definitely feel like if you want like a heavy gloss kind of look, then the luster or the um, slick rock metallic pearl will be more interesting. But for me, what I love about the Juniper Burrito rag paper is that I feel like it's a versatile paper that across different formats of how I shoot or what I shoot. It's a consistent message that comes across on the paper and the durability and, you know, feeling of the quality is there for it. Well, and can you also um, just repeat the shipping tube company that you use out of uh, Pennsylvania? Here, um, yeah, I'm just gonna hold up the box so you guys can kind of see, but. Yeah, we're getting a lot of questions about <laughs> the shipping tube. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Yazoo Mills. They're they're super affordable, super strong. You get carton sent. Um, there's all types of other shipping options on there, but you know, since I've been working with those tubes, like they're they're really solid when sending out a, a rolled up print. Um, how do you present your work in a portfolio? Do you use a specific type of portfolio or brand? Um, I'm trying to remember what the brand is. Uh, Itoya, I think, is what it's called. You know, those are really good um, because it has like the double sided page. You can slide the print in and the, they vary in size. So they can go from like, you know, four by six up to 13 by 19. So that's usually a general way that I'll try to present um, a portfolio because it's, it's more likely like a book. You know, people can stop and examine an image as they're turning a page to really take it in. Um, with your street photography, have you had any problems with someone not wanting their photos to be taken? Um, sometimes. I mean, I'm tr I'm pretty. I, I try to gauge the situations uh, carefully. So if I see someone I think has an interesting look, that I really just want to make a solid portrait of them, I'll, I'll just go up to them and ask them. You know, can I make a portrait of you? If they say no, then you know I say okay and I keep moving on. Um, maybe sometimes people will see a photograph and they'll ask like, "What are you doing?" And that's when uh, I've spoken on this before. So I'll, I'll keep 
a four by six Itoya portfolio book in my bag. If ever I'm out street shooting or doing anything and someone says, Hey, like, like, what is this? What are you doing? I'll pull out the portfolio and show them, Hey, I'm a photographer. I shoot X, Y, and Z. Again, the impact of print in hand is way more impactful than trying to pull out your phone, pull up your Instagram and swipe to show them photographs. It delivers a message, whether they are okay with it or not. I think they comprehend what I'm doing a little bit better and they're not as angry or they're a little bit more understanding of it. Right. Do portraits translate well to your uh, paper and printer choices? Yeah, yeah, definitely do. Cause I think it, it goes hand in hand with understanding your camera and how you work with your camera to make the photograph. And that's the other fun part about printing is it is this is an extension of your photograph. So learning to make the photograph is one half. And I think the other half, which is really fun is in the digital age, understanding how to like make the consistent quality print of your photograph time and time again. Cool. Um, we haven't really spoken a, a lot about this, but um, someone is asking, what is the process of getting your visual brand started? So I, I don't know if you want to mention a little bit about visual. Yeah, I have uh, a skateboard company, Visual Skateboards now. Uh, it'll be seven years next month that I've owned it. Um, and how that whole thing got started was just through skateboarding and photography, I started doing a lot of projects with a variety of companies, you know, from Skate Mafia to the hundreds to Huff uh, to Primitive to the point where I had, you know, a good run of successful collaborations with these companies, I'd say. And so I just put the idea in my head, hey, you should start your own thing. You just did it with everyone else. So for me, uh, it was two factors. One was like, sure, why not? I mean, I don't have much to lose other than to try. And the other thing was realizing that it is an extension of printing, printing your image on different things, not just the traditional paper form, but hats, uh, skate decks, uh, sweatshirts, accessories. Um, you know, I've had my photos laser etched onto like Mopi charging cases in a collaboration with them. I've done grip tape uh, collaborations with Mob Grip. Um, I've done umbrellas with Westerly. So it's really fun to kind of explore how does a, a printed image resonate on the, all these different surfaces and layers. And, you know, so visual has been like a fun little experiment between my work and working with other photographers to share their, their images that way. Yeah, that's great. And I know you um, touched on this a, a bit that you use Juniper along like almost all of your different um, types of photography. Is there a specific paper that you go to for um, your color images? Uh, color stuff, I think like the luster works really well for that. If you, if it depends on the finish, if you want, like again, the, the versatility of a lot of the Moab paper is good, but I would say like the exhibition luster is like a really good for color um, with a cooler tone. If you want a little bit of warmth to your color images, the burrito rag is good. If you want the matte color look, then I would just say the Entrada Rag Natural uh, or even some of the Entrada Rag Bright White stuff could be pretty good. Cool. When you calibrate your monitor, what uh, luminance setting do you use? Uh, I think it's like a 5 to 5200 or something like that, I think. Or yeah, something like that. That's more technical. I kind of just followed the instructions that I got. <laughs> it looks good. I mean, they're, that's yeah. why with Moab, it's great because they have a lot of technical advisors that'll go layers deeper into it. Um, you know, I'm still always learning more about photography. So even like to, to calibrate my monitor, I've learned, uh, I, I would use the data color spider one, but having the BenQ now, I'm using the basic color, um, col color monitor stuff. And that's been pretty solid as well. And working with the people from Freestyle Photo, they helped me the process of step-by-step -step to like get, you know, the consistent results that I need, so. Right, and if anyone's looking for, to get um, into more technical questions about printing, we also have a bunch of technical webinars um, that we do every couple of weeks. So definitely um, check out those and you can t uh, talk to our technical master who will be answering those questions yeah. too. I see, um, I see a quick, yeah. Oh yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was just reading the questions through, so yeah. whenever you're ready, let's, let's keep it going. <laughs> um, are you totally freelance or do you do commissioned work or magazine advertising slash editorial work? 
Uh, I'm, I'd probably say 95% freelance. Occasionally a project comes through that allows me to like work with somebody or a company. Um, I think my idea for that kind of stuff has been more or less if someone comes to me and they have like a whole mood board and they say, we want you to make this. And I'll, you know, it depends on how they're wording it. But for the most part, I'll say, well, you don't need me. You just need someone who can comprehend pushing buttons to make you that. Uh, I like the idea of if, if it is a, a commissioned work that it should be purely based on how you shoot, what you do, where the person understands that they can give you the message that they will want to get at the end, but let you make it your way and present it to them. Um, you know, I've done some work with like a couple of hotel chains. Uh, I did like social work with like Adidas for a shoe a couple of years ago. Um, so most likely too, I think the biggest thing I, I look at when working with those opportunities is one, is it a brand or a company that I actually like believe in? Cause I feel like if you really mess with the company that's coming at you, you're going to make better work if you back it versus I'm just doing this for the paycheck. Um, and then also the other factor I usually take into consideration is regardless of the money, take the money out of the equation. Does the project sound interesting and exciting? Will you learn something? You know, is it going to be a great process for you? That matters more important to me than just like, you're going to get paid to go do this. And just, I know we touched on this also, but just because I'm seeing a few more questions about this, um, mm -hmm. do you do a lot of test prints before the, the final print? Uh, if it's a big scale print I'm looking to make, then of course, you know, um, you know, I, I use uh, this graphic light little display, which when you're seeing the color of your prints, like, you know, even if you have like a place that has like a lot of great natural light, it's still good to like put the, the print up underneath and that way you can turn the light on and see how true the colors are for the most part. So yeah, I'll definitely do a test print to see how the texture comes out. Maybe shadows might need adjustment. Maybe highlights need to be pulled down. There might be subtle details that need to be fixed a little bit, but yeah, it's always good to do a small test print before you commit to something big like a 13 by 19, 11 by 17 and up because then you're just, you know, you're gonna save yourself paper and ink. Yeah. Yeah. Would you um, or have you ever re-edited an image you've taken over a year ago? And if so, why? <clears throat> um, not over a year ago, but I definitely would say like I'm revisiting images that I made maybe four, five years ago prior. Um, just because, you know, photography through maybe 2012, 13 to 2015 was like a big exploration of like presets like like Visco was like a major thing. So we were, I think a lot of people were just all playing around with like these presets and the coloring and, you know, some photographs I'll see and like, while well, I understand like what that was at that time, I want to revisit like how I would process that image today and try to make it more true to what I saw versus um, adjusted colors that weren't as realistic. Yeah. Uh, do you ever make double-sided prints? No, I, I know that you guys make some paper, like the LaSalle uh, dual semi-gloss stuff can do the dual side. I've never never tried that per se, um, but maybe one day I'll, I'll take a run at it. Yeah, our Enchata actually also um, is double-sided too. Um, what device do you use to calibrate your monitor? Uh, it's a basic, uh, basic BAS capital ICC. They make a little like a, I think when I bought it from Freestyle Photo, it's called like a squid. I think it was like a package, but you just hang it on your monitor and run the software and flip it open. So that way you can read the luminance on your monitor and adjust all the colors as needed. Cool. Do you often change the images in your, um, the smaller portfolio you were talking about before when you show it to people? Yeah, I think I'll, I, in the portfolio, it's a variety of work. So it's like some aerial, some portraiture, some street, some skateboarding. So if I make a photograph that I feel stronger than anything that currently is in there, I'll swap it out. And that's the whole fun point too about like playing with port about like playing with portfolio books is like seeing how your work can like speak to the other photographs involved. You know, it's a, it's how does someone understand your message when they look at your work? Yeah. Um, do you have any recommendation for beginners? Um, what paper to use? Anyone that's that asked me that question, I always recommend the sample pack that Moab makes. And I would just say find, you know, one color image that you really like that you made, find one black and white, 
and print those because uh, there's two uh, types of paper per box, right? So that way you can kind of see what a color image resonates on all the papers, what a black and white you know resonates on all the other papers, and just really take your time looking at them, hold them, feel them, and that's how I think you should really start discovering what paper it is you want to you want to print with. Yeah, we do have a sample box um, that you can get on our website that has two sheets of our entire range if you wanted to test them all out. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a portfolio that doesn't have glossy sheets that you use? Uh, she likes matte paper, so sh she just yeah, well, to avoid the glossiness. Well, Moab makes uh, portfolio books that have no, no gloss uh, sheets on them. It's the tape, right? You got to tape yep. to the page and then, yeah. So we have a Flint portfolio that has uh, adhesive strips that you can print on any sheet. Um, as long as you don't want it double-sided, then you can stick with the Entrada or LaSalle, but you can just adhere the strips to the sheets and put them in the portfolio yourself and you can use any paper that you'd like. Um, mm -hmm. Do you hang your prints in your home? Uh, no. I try to find other artwork aside from mine uh, these days that um, that may be inspiring or something. So like, that's what I usually try to focus on now. But early on, that was a big reason why I started printing was because I couldn't afford artwork for say or the artwork that I was interested in. So I thought the next best thing would be to make photographs myself that I like. And then at least I can have stuff that kind of like I felt represent me at the time and, and hang it up. Do you have any favorite photographers that you're following that you're like, oh, I love uh, this print, I need this? No, I mean, there's a lot of great photographers that I follow, but I mean, like with the print stuff, what they do, I try to like see at a show or something that I'll buy it there. I've never messaged one. I think actually the only one that I bought recently was um, the photographer Boogie. There's a lot of beautiful street, street work. Um, I saw maybe it was like a year or so ago that he was offering some some silver gelatin prints. So I ordered like four or five from him. Um, yeah, I think that was the last time I bought some prints. And other than that, I just I keep my eye on things and I have a lot of cool photo books that I'll look through. And you know, if I come across something in a in a gallery one day, maybe you know I'll try to buy something. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of great photographs out there. Yeah. How many prints do you have in your archive? a lot i haven't counted i should probably count one day but it's definitely a lot <laughs> um you know i have tons of the archival boxes you know building up now like i said through all this is most of my days i try to make a point at some time in the day to like archive at least like 10 images um yeah so a lot cool uh do you have a portfolio for the different jobs that you want to apply for or just different genres or how do you um, um differentiate well, them? I mean, I mean, I don't like that. And that's like the interesting thing is that I don't really pursue commercial photography as much. Um, the, the, the benefit I would say of having visual skateboards as my primary um, source of income, it kind of allows me a little bit more wiggle room. Um, so more or less like jobs that come across is usually through word of mouth or through a friend that introduces me to someone and we discuss a project and try to like go from there on it. Cool. When considering cost of printing with shipping, um, what is an ideal profit margin for sale for you? And is it has it increased as your brand has grown? Um, let's see. I would probably say the profit margin per sale is maybe ninety percent, ninety five percent. You know, because I think that's the one thing I try to explain to people is um, even if you're just starting out, you know, factor in the cost of I would say, I think the 11 by 14, say burrito rag paper from Moab is like in a store is like maybe 65 bucks and it's 25 sheets in it. You know, aside from the ink, you can kind of factor in like what each print print roughly costs. But I mean, even if you sell your prints for 10 bucks, you know, if you could sell through, you know, the whole box and like you made your money back and some just on what you had to pay for the, the paper and, you know, the shipping costs usually, usually can get lumped in. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just a matter of that. But yeah, I guess like that's why I always tell people start low because as time builds up and your photographs get stronger and better, your price point for your prints can go up too. So definitely, I guess like as you put in the time and as you put in the work, the scale of uh, your price point for your prints can go up. Right. Uh, do you include an artist statement within your portfolio or your even your prints? Uh, no, I don't because uh, usually... 
I mean, I've never dropped off a portfolio for someone to review without me there. So usually the, the way to have that statement is usually just face to face and, you know, just discussing it. Um, do you sign your prints? Yeah. I mean, even like that's a, that's a given to me. I think like any person starting off printing, you should always uh, sign your print and try to establish that, you know, significant thing. That's your mark as well. Uh, sometimes a lot of people, when they buy prints ask, Oh, will you sign it? And it's kind of like, yeah, no, of course it's, it's a given that's going to be signed. Right. Do you always edit to a pure black point in your edits? Uh, no, not necessarily. And then just going back to, um, signing prints, do you sign it in the front or back any specific area? I sign it on the front. Usually whenever I print, I try to create an inch and a half to two inch border around the whole print because you just never know how someone's going to frame it, if they're going to want matting or what they're going to do. So giving that border not only allows for you to sign your name, but it also allows the person that when they frame it, they have more, um, more room to figure out how they want it to look. Right. Um, so we don't have too many more questions, but I know that you were um, going to have a gallery that was back in April. Do you have any new plans <laughs> for the gallery or is it kind of just yeah. being seen? I had, it's, it's a little unfortunate. I spoke to um, one of the guys who runs the gallery and works with the hotel. Um, he, I asked him, like, you know, what are you hearing? What's going on? He said, I would probably say, if you want to have a successful show, plan for next March or next April. Oh. So, so the unfortunate thing is that I, the print, the prints are done, and these are like the largest scale prints that I've done of a lot of my aerial work of Los Angeles. So um, I'm going to figure out what to do with them in the meantime. I don't think I'm going to have them sit at the print studio for almost a year. So I right. might be just doing single releases um, a week, you know, over the next couple of months to see if anyone's interested in these, you know, four by six prints that I made of some of this uh, LA work. Well, hopefully someday. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then okay. just a, a couple more questions. A lot of people are asking about how you sign your prints. Um, how do you sign it on a glossy paper? Uh, there's a variety of pens you can get. I'm going to see if I have one over here. Um, yeah, I don't see it. It's over back there. There's a um, print you can go if you go to like, um, like a Dick Blix like website kind of thing, or even like Aaron Brothers. There's like fine art pens that have archival ink in them that you know they'll give you a variety pack within it and some paper some pens work better on the gloss some work better on matte um so that's what i would say i forgot the brand name of it but any any art supply shop if you search uh archival ink pen like you'll find pens that work usually work really good on the uh glossy stuff do you also date it when you sign it I don't date it uh, unless someone requests sometimes people will request uh, a date to it I'll, I'll gladly do that Cool. I'm going to try to go through some of these last few questions. Um, we're yeah, for almost sure. out of time, but we can get through as many yeah. as we can. Um, how do you keep track yeah. of your archived prints? Uh, by labeling the boxes and just, I, I think when you're a photographer, you get pretty familiar with your work and you keep track. For me, at least I'm able to keep track just by like visually remembering what I printed and where, where it's at. So uh, when you start, you know, building out like a city box or if it's, you know, portraits or if it's the specific someone that, you shot a ton of portraits, you know, it's all there. So I think it's just a matter of just thorough going to work and trying to remember as best what you printed. Um, someone's asking about the point and shoot camera that you use. Uh, for film wise, I use a Rico GR. I like that, like it's so, so skinny and so good. I use those. Um, and then if I'm using a digital point and shoot camera, it's usually like the Leica Deluxe. That works really good. Someone also mentioned that they use the Micron pen. So if you're looking for um, a pen to sign your prints, mm -hmm. that's a great suggestion. Um, just some comments. Um, do you know uh, if any any galleries in the LA area are looking to feature photographers' work? Not that's right now. I think I, 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 I know, think right now. Tough, <laughs> tough yeah, timing. I, th I, th I, th I, th I think right now, like. I think when things start to ease up, if I was a photographer looking to really get shown in galleries, the best thing is like make the physical portfolios of your work that you want to share and just go into the galleries and just try to request a moment to speak with the curator. 
and explain, you know, what it is with your photographs that you want to share and show it to them and see what they say. I think that's like the best thing you can do. Like don't, you can try emailing, but I think like that in-person impression goes a long way. Right. Um, if there's no more questions, then I think we'll start to wrap it up. Um, thanks everyone for joining and thank you, Stefan, for answering all these questions for us. Um, mm -hmm. And if there's any other questions that you have, you can feel free to email us and we can always ask Stefan for you or um, answer mm -hmm. them ourselves. So some of these questions I know were a little more about um, the cameras and we were trying to focus on the print side of it. So feel free to ask us and we can get you the answer for all these questions if you're um, curious. But um, yeah, definitely stay tuned for more webinars coming up and Stefan, maybe we'll have you back to answer some more questions that we didn't no, get to. The, the, but... the, yeah, this, this, this was really fun. Like I want to say thank you to everyone that took the time out today to come, you know, and collectively as a community, you know, I see you guys sharing info within the chat and that's kind of what this is all about, right? We're all in the same idea. We're all in the same community and it's all about sharing. So thank, thank you, Moab, Paige, for having me. Uh, I have the opportunity to do this and thanks everyone that, you know, took time out today to come sit through this with us cool well thank you all right great i hope <laughs>